Today, thanks to the exhibition designed and built by the Association Sardina Romana according to the canons of experimental archaeology, we will tell you about the navigation in peace and war in the Mediterranean Sea, telling you the stories of naval battles alongside the stories of merchant ships that carried goods from port to port. Now, inspired by the miniature model of a Roman trireme, we will tell you about one of the most important warships that sailed the Mediterranean Sea around the 3rd century before Christ. The trireme was the most formidable warship in Greek, Carthaginian and Roman fleets. It was light and fast, and with three orders of rowers, the trireme had an exceptional agility in maneuvers and a high propulsive power. The sails, one large and one small, were made of pieces of cloth sewn together and could be reduced or hoisted. In battle trim, the main mast was removed and the boat was maneuvered only with oars. The preferred timber for triremes was oak, mainly for the hull and cedar from Lebanon. Their prows were often decorated with apotropaic painted eyes, used as a symbol to ward off evil. The number of people on board was likely to be around 220 to 30 men, of which 170 were oarsmen. They were not slaves, but trained citizens. In fact, the loss of skilled labor without a fast replacement was one of the causes of the decline in Carthaginian maritime power. The most fearsome weapon on warships was the rostrum, a bronze ram that was used to violently break into the sides of enemy ships and sink them. It was solid and embedded into a structure outside the keel of the ship. The rostrum sailed on the sea surface and it was well designed to cut through the waves without slowing down the ship by making the water flow over the sides. The rostrum was fixed by large nails, therefore a light fixing, so that if it got stuck, it could be removed by the oarsman or left in the enemy ship. At the top of the rostrum, the proembulum acted as a limit switch. It allowed the rostrum to break through the enemy's ship without penetrating too far and getting stuck. The Carthaginians used to engrave inscriptions in the rostrum with invocations to their main god Baal or offenses to their enemies. The Romans were more pragmatic. Often we find a deity flanked by the names of the financiers of that ship. We know that columns could also be decorated with bronze rams. In fact, a column with the rostra of the enemy ships was erected in honor of the Battle of Mile, Milazzo, northeastern Sicily, in 260 BC, when the consul Gaius Duilius defeated the Carthaginians in a memorable naval battle. These were common features of Greek, Carthaginian and Roman warships, but the latter at another distinctive device, the corvus, a Latin word meaning raven. The corvus was used by the Romans in the naval battles of the First Punic War against Carthage, and Greek historian Polybius describes it as a movable footbridge about 10 meters long and 1.2 meters wide, with a small parapet on either side and a metal spike that stuck into the deck of the enemy ship. This footbridge allowed the infantry to fight on water as on land and to exploit the combat tactics of which Rome was a master. The Romans, in fact, were not skilled in sea fighting because they had never needed to specialize in this area. They even borrowed ships from the Sochi Navales, their allies. The raven was a device that brought the Romans many victories at least until the crews gained the necessary experience in naval battles. In time, the raven was abandoned because it weighed down the bow and made the ship unstable in stormy seas. So it was replaced by lighter footbridges, which, if necessary, could be released simply by cutting a rope. The use of these ships lasted until the 4th century AD when new types of warships began to be introduced. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.